needs and likes to do something different than you do. I'm here. So I'd like to quote an old timer here that comes to our board meetings every week. Uh, Bill Murray, the chair of our ACC, and he says, I'm living a dream. If you're not living a dream here, you don't have much of a chance anywhere else. So this is why new members and guests, they're here, they're here to trigger you, to force you to be happy, force you to be involved. Next. Let's, let's go through a couple of the strategic direction survey things, just, just to give you a flavor. 94% agreed with the core value of high quality amenities and services which reflect the interests of current and prospective members and guests right here. That means 6% don't give a damn on here. That's all. 83% agreed we should enhance our amenities and add new ones to meet the needs of our current and future members on here. That means 17%, yeah, they could kind of care less on here. Future members is important because the amenities required to draw in and support future members may be a different mix of amenities than the ones that we have active right now. Pickleball, I hate to always address this, but pickleball is an example of that one. The other one, 83% agreed we should offer a variety of high quality amenities that are good for our community, even if they don't use them. There's no way we're all gonna use every amenity. I mean, you're gonna do what you're gonna do, you're gonna do what, you're gonna, what you like to do, or you're gonna do what your neighbors talk you into doing <laughs> on here. Now, this is, this is probably the most important chart in the whole presentation. This sets the operational and, envi and uh, environmental philosophy of how Fairfield Glade is trying to operate. <clears throat> and it's two sides of a spectrum. One side is what's called the cost-cutting cost culture. This is the one that says, I don't want to spend a buck today because I don't think I need to spend it because I don't expect to be here in five years. Or, thing. or I'd rather spend that buck on going downtown and having a, half, having a beer or something of that nature. So it, it, reduced, it reduced costs in the near term, but you're sacrificing the future. And whether you like it or not, tomorrow is going to come on that, whether you are here or not. On that. And we're a, we're a community club. It's our, it's our drive to make the club perpetuate. That's your problem and how you perpetuate yourself. And then, so on this one here, you can expect there's, there's a weak dues engine. In other words, we, we keep a clamp on our assessments. It's capital starved. You can look around and see some of it already. Look at the Rocket Center. I mean, that's so far out of date relative to all of our other amenities that it isn't even funny. Nothing. F and B is a profit center. This is yet to be decided. I mean, there may be pieces of it that could be that are profitable or should be profitable. But in general, it's there to help you. You get up in the morning and you want to have an egg sandwich, you can go have an egg sandwich. Diminishing expectations. This, this is the one that I focused on a minute ago, difference between newcomers and old comers. The diminishing expectations say, yeah, I'm getting older, I'm not going to do that. Why do I want to put a dollar into this? Why do I need to do that? That isn't conducive to future growth. Focus on the present. No, focus on tomorrow. Because if you don't do something today, tomorrow doesn't occur the way you want it. And just pure cost cutting. Yes, there is an opportunity to gain efficiencies and reduce costs here and there. The, the, the problem and the issue is reducing the correct costs on that thing. Value creation is the second philosophy. That says, let's do things now 
that will make tomorrow better. Better for us, better for everyone else, better for the folks around us. It's got a strong news engine. And by that I mean I don't necessarily constrain it. Don't get carried away either. I mean, it's, there's, still, there's still reasonableness involved here. It's capital rich. In other words, if we do that correctly, we'll start to get our reserves in place so that we can do things that we need to do out into the future. F&B is an amenity. It's there because we want it, because we need it. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough one because every single person in this room has a different idea of what F&B is and what you... Oops, that gonna re that's, a, that's okay, I can talk without charts. Oh, sorry, the master plan, this is one of those unforeseen budget events that occur from time to time. I can continue on a bit while, they, while you're going through it. Now, now it's, it's not one or the other that we need to deal with. It's, a, it's, a, it's an optimal mix that we're trying to shoot for. There's, a, there's an opportunity for close-end changes. There's an opportunity for future changes. And that's what we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, let me talk about what that means from a budget point of view. <clears throat> There are two kinds of budgets in my experience that I've dealt with on here. One is called a constrained budget, and one's called an, an enabling budget. A constrained budget says that you put the place, you put in place the numbers as you see them right now, all the way out through the year, through December 31 of 2018, and by God, you make those numbers happen. Come hell or high water. And that. that fits in with the cost-cutting culture right off the bat. It doesn't, it doesn't give you flexibilities necessarily. The enabling budget says you put, through, you put the budget in place on what you think it is, just as you would with the cost, and then as you move through the year, things maneuver. And by that I mean things change. Like the police department this year, we originally had in the budget a new building to do by the end of the year. And the opportunity came up to take advantage and get something far more flexible than we would have if we had built the, uh, built the building. Not only that, an enabling budget allows the management to do things that they might not be able to do in a constraining budget. I know in my experience when, I, when we had managers, we always we always put together the budget, we put it in, we gave the numbers, and we knew, we knew there was five or 10% in that budget that was flexible. And it wasn't there so they could spend it however they wanted, it was there to address new projects and new opportunities that arose as the year went along. And that's part of this value creation culture. If Sam has an idea for roads or what have you, we like to have a little flexibility so we can address it if necessary on here. Cost efficiency is still important. I mean, we're not going to give people uh, Cadillac expeditions and what have you to drive around in, but uh, those things. So I say this is the most important chart because this is the chart that sets the philosophy in your mind of all the things I'm going to talk about next in terms of what's good and what's not quite so good. Okay, the 2019-2020 projects. Important thing here is that, I don't know if all of you know this, but 2020 is Fairfield Glade's 50th anniversary. Well, we've been here 50 years. That means somebody did something right 50, 49, 48, 47, 46 years ago. So we're sitting here as we are right now. 
that means we gotta do something right so when we celebrate the 75th anniversary, we know we did something right in 50, 51, 52 years ago on here. This budget, the 2019 budgets, focus on capital maintenance projects and minor enhancements. There isn't a major, there isn't a major amenity in improvements in uh, 2019. Um, so, there's no better time than right now, right this coming 50th anniversary, to put ourselves on the map and to strut the stuff of Fairfield Glade. If you want to be improving and you want new people, you want new ideas, you start now. You've got, you've got an opportunity coming up in a year, a year and a half, to make it really, really public, really, really visible. And I think there's no better time for us as members to reflect on that too. Don't leave it to the management, don't leave it to the board. You as members have a say in this too. Start thinking about the things that make us what we are and the things that make us better as part of that 50th anniversary. Okay, the specifics, some of the specific stuff for 2019, 2020. First of all, community master planning. This is a place, this here is for the strategic issue of land use. In other words, we need, we've got land floating around here now that's sitting there open. Some of it should stay open, but some of it can be put to good use on that. Put to good use in terms of improved amenities, improved traffic, you name it, whatever. There's a million, million projects. This one here, the developer must be involved on here. And you're gonna, I'm gonna show you some of his preliminary thoughts in a little bit. But the developer is a key part of the thinking. It's not all driven by just Fairfield Glade Community Club. So, let's start with the police station. We're gonna complete the renovations that we started in 2018. Most of those are all cleanup things, as, as I would call cleanup things anyway. Compliant, ADA compliant, generator, HVAC, on and on and on, separate far parking area for police. This, this is a signature building for Fairfield Glade. That's the very first thing you see when you come into Fairfield Glade. Right now you don't see much, you see berms of dirt and what have you, but eventually that, that building is gonna stand loud and proud when you drive in and you'll see Fairfield Glade Police Department. It looks nice, it does the job that it has, it fulfills a, 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 an important function, and it kind of sets the stage for what a visitor and a guest will see as they come further into the glade. Concert Park. This started, the discussion on this started in the past year or so. Concert Park right now is, is really a, um, a move into it's a move into our outdoor focus, a move into broadening events within the Glade. And I say outdoor focus, you, you've seen what a success the trails are. You can see Murrah Lake is a, is a, is a success, but it's a limited success. I mean, it, it's only a success on Mondays when you drive by and see 247 collapsible chairs sitting out there with nobody sitting in them <laughs> until later until later in the evening. So what, we're, what this does, it addresses the issue of getting a venue in place that allows some breadth of activity and some breadth of interest on here. There'll be a, a performance pavilion and paved paths around Murrah Lake. This, this would be funded by FGCC on land that would probably be long-term leased through Tom Anderson, a developer. There's a two-story general store in concept, I'm gonna go through that in a minute, uh, to be developed by Tom Anderson as the developer, not, not on FGCC's dime. There's also a move afoot to set up a veterans memorial to be funded by private donations, 501c3. Whatever that, whatever that tends to be, just something as a, as a remembrance on here. And all this we'd like completed by Memorial Day on 2020. 
And why Memorial Day in 2020? Anybody? What is it? You forgot already. It's 50th anniversary year. Now, the concert park itself. This is a little, you can't gain much out of this. Let me just point out a couple of high places. This right here is the Wyndham check-in building. The, the concept is that there would be a general store of some type right here, which is basically where part of Mirror Lake used to be and that sort of thing. This is the uh, Pavilion Plaza with terrace seating and all that stuff facing this way, which is northeast on here. And then this, these here are various paths around, all through it. And uh, that, forms, that forms a central gathering place where the, things can be done in that performance center that cannot be done in the um, four-way stop right now whether it be band concerts, plays, skits, outdoor karaoke, you name it. There's a million things that can be done to make that. So you can use that thing more than Mondays on sunny days. Okay, pavilion options. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sensitize you here right now. Don't believe anything you see. <laughs> These are concepts. They're just, they're just artist sketches on things. Hey, you know, it could be this, could be that, but it might not, probably won't look anything like any one of these things. But it gives you an idea of the flexibility that we have to define what that area looks like, yet to be determined on here. And you can see you got everything from this kind of a nice outdoor look to tiki look to I don't know what kind of look that is, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> so those are some of the just just to give you ideas of things that are possible. The general store itself. Tom, the developer, he, he has so far determined that there is no commercial developer that he can find that's interested in doing this project on its own. On here. There's just not enough population. There's not enough in the way of demographics. There's not enough, I don't know, maybe even interest on here. He's going to step up, or he's going to have to prove its viability by stepping himself, looking for other investments to sort of partner with him in terms of what he does. He wants to be a landlord only. In other words, get the building up, put it up, get it first class, ready to go and then find tenants. And he wants operators for retail space, food and beverage outlets, such as coffee shop, bakery, deli, brew pub, wood-fired pizza, little things like that that are specialized niches that we do not have right now when you come right down to it. That means they're small. Uh, pretty much, I mean, that means you're not gonna have a, you're not going to be able to call up as a club and say, I need to reserve uh, 47 places in the uh, wood-fired pizza place. It's not going to happen on there. It's a, so it's not meant for events. It's meant for you, the members, to go, enjoy, have some variety, try some different things. And what might it look like? Here again, don't get excited. These are, these are just options of things of what it could. It has to be desired. I mean, you can get the old rundown southern look. <laughs> you, can get, you can get the Charleston look. Yeah, even the Savannah look. The old uh, Cracker Barrel look. And on, and on here, the uh, gaudy southern mansion look. On here. So there's lots of opportunities on how this can fit in around there. So the next one down, it's got even more options. You got the gigantic display look here where you can be extravaganza. You've got the village look. Yeah, nice little colonial look. That looks like a college fraternity or something look. 
right there. And a nice small little country store look right there. So options, options. Keep in mind, flexibility to be determined. Interior. You can go downtown in Crossville and you can go into a couple of stores there and you can see interiors that look like this and they're pretty nice. They've got a nice environment. You walk in, they're kind of like a country, nice country old time store and got different stuff. Uh, I know one of them down there has a really nice selection of brew pub stuff. You walk in, I forget the name of it now, right on Main Street. But they all have this kind of look. So, that, that's kind of in the, kind of in the works. Don't, I wouldn't bet your life's fortune that it'll happen, but we're sure trying to make it happen if it does. Robin Hood Park. Robin, <coughs> excuse me. Robin Hood Park is a, here again, this is a focus on an outdoor venue. As you can tell, this is kind of a recurring theme. We're trying to get people more out of the, more out of the air-conditioned buildings and more out of the enclosed areas and more into outdoor stuff on that thing. If we've got the beauty, we've got the land, that connection's important. And on, a, on here, we have part of it. I mean, there's a, there's a part there. We got money from the state because of the... Uh, because of the road, I think we've got about $190,000 reserved for um, whatever needs to be done. And what needs to be done first is a new parking lot, which we will not do until after the Peavine Road thing is squared away on here. What improvements are you talking about in Peavine? Pardon? What improvements do you need? I mean, what? The road. The road has to be finished. You need a parking lot for Robin Hood Park. So when people go to visit the park and have their lunch or do exercises or whatever they do, they gotta have a place to park. We had one, that parking lot was taken away when, we, when the road widening proceeded. Mm -hmm. um, so that's waiting on the donation. We'll see how long that's gonna take on that, if ever. I mean. And the strategic issue here is vibrant lifestyle, amenity. It's an amenity for a lifestyle. And there again, that provides an opportunity for other things happening. I mean, picnics and get-togethers and weddings and blah, 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 on and on and on uh, to use that space. Stonehenge Clubhouse. <clears throat> Stonehenge Clubhouse, we've got a premier golf facility now we need something approaching a premier facility to go with it on that. And that's one of our more popular dining venues right now. It's kind of nice. You can go in there, you can sit there, you can sit out on the patio, you can chat. It's not too, too, too uh, crowded. We want, we're envisioning something that has an interior similar to Dorchester. When you walk into, into um, Stonehenge now, as you know, it's, it's pretty constrained. You walk into this long tunnel, like I expect uh, witches and skeletons come out of the closet along the way as you walk, as you walk down that aisle on that thing. So you want to get the kind of opening when you walk into Dorchester. It's beautiful, it's open, it's spacious, it's modern looking, and it, it kind of gives you an aura of tranquility, if you will, that you don't get when you go into Stonehenge. And the issue here again, amenities for lifestyle on that day. We we'll use it, yes, you use it for eating, yes, you use it for golf, yes, you can use it for just plain old social gathering on the, uh, on the deck and everything. Concept here again, don't get excited. This is the first, this is the first pass. We try to get, try to get the uh, welcomingness to that building a little more spiffy than it is right now. And, uh, try to get the, uh, the hills that are there a little better, a little more controlled, et cetera. So and you can see this, this encroaches down into where all those flowers and things are. Uh, it takes away some of that. But that's a concept, things to be determined. 
Heather's Bunkers. The bunker project that we did on Stonehenge has turned out to be quite spectacular. It's been productivity-wise great in that uh, people that used to have to clean bunkers and drain them every morning now can be doing other things, whatever it is. They're not holding water like before, so it means folks like most of you, you don't have to, you don't have to perfect your water shots out of the bunker. <laughs> On that thing. So it impacts playability. And as I said here, the maintenance on here, and this is a more of amenity. It's an amenity. Now, when you play Stonehenge, you've got a whole lot to complain about, a whole lot less to complain about than you did before. The only thing you can complain is that now you have to play out of the bunker if you go in and you don't have an option. So that's a, that's a project. This is what the old bunkers used to look like at Stonehenge when it rained. It was more of a water hazard than a bunker. And now with the new Billy Bunker system, drainage is nice, things are clean, people don't have to take care of it nearly so much. And that's what we envision for like, to start with, I think it's starting with just on, a, on the um, Bray course to go, that's a, because the Bray, is our second premier golf course. <clears throat> I mean, that's ranked, what, number five. So we're, so we're focusing in on these things that are a draw, a unique draw to Fairfield Glade. Okay. Racket Center. <clears throat> Racket Center is a, um, the project here is to vastly improve the look and that's for consistency within the glade. That's the dumpiest looking building in the whole glade, except for the maintenance building on here. We want to, I mean, it, you drive in there now and you drive through the glade, you've got nice, you've got this, nice building, police building, et cetera, and then you look over and you've got a cheap barn look, which is the racket center. It's funny. Here in the Glade, we want our residents, we want our houses and residents to be consistent and to look, and to look consistent and be neat, but we're willing to live with crappy looking buildings like that. That's as much a part of our image as any house that you drive by. So the center where it's going on is very visible. That when you sit there and you drive in, that's the second building really that you see when you come into the glade on that. It, there's land north of it, <clears throat> that strip beyond the pickleball that, that might be usable for other things. Don't know what yet. The issue here is community design and use of land on here. 2020 projects. You'll notice, although some of you might not have, that there's no longer a Fairfield Glade sign next to uh, the um, Peavine Road. It's been taken down. And it was taken down for a couple of reasons. Number one, safety. Uh, it was so close to the road, people working on it there could get clipped. And uh, number two, let's face it, it's an out-of-date sign. We need something a little spiffier. So when the project, when the road project is done, then the location of that sign and the mechanics of the sign and the, uh, will be decided. The uh, Robin Hood Park improvements each year. L the longer range plan on Robin Hood Park says that, yes, you'll have the picnic area that you have right now. Yes, you'll have parking. There's also a possibility there of a, of a senior activity trail, something of that nature, um, or, or other things. Picnic, who knows what else on that. So. There's, there's some improvements there that are planned for on a continuing basis as we go along until we end up with a integrated, comprehensive, beautiful amenity. Oh, yeah. And then another one, uh, this one isn't uh, the, they, these two are, they don't kind of fit into the atmosphere part of our amenities. The restroom at the square and update two 
of the restrooms at Druid and one at Dorchester on here. These, these restrooms that we have right now are sort of one step above a porta potty. <laughs> so we want to get that a little, a little nicer. And here again, it comes down to land use and design. 